What a crazy world. Things are going rough everywhere. So I hope at least we can put a little bit of a smile on your face with the sneak peeks for an upcoming release that features a lot of improvements, loads of bug fixes, and then also new features. In this video, I'm going to quickly look at a number of them. So welcome back to Brazil. My name is JP and this is our sneak peek. Now we've already had two sneak peeks. In this one, I'm going to look at a few, some that I cannot actually show you because I'm on a staging website, which is limited in terms of what I can access externally. So some of the features I'm showing you, I cannot show you the end result, but they will be working once this release come out. First of all, this release is around the corner. I cannot tell you exactly when, that's why we call it a sneak peek. And then second of all, what I am showing you will definitely come out. This won't be a case of I show you something and then we wait. No, we wait. Um, we're still waiting. So not that case. Right, so let's start talking. The first one I'll show you is the new toolbar for text elements. I'll select this text element here and you can see we have quite a reduced toolbar. The bold function, the uppercase italics that have been removed, but they are not gone. They've been moved to a different spot to free up some space and allow for some new features. When you go to T4 Typography, you will see that they appear here very nicely. So you can set the functions over here. The usual suspects are there, bold, italics, underline, and then strike through. And then we have this one for uppercase, plus two new ones. This one is uh, lowercase. And then this one, which says none, is actually subscript and superscript. So when you select a part of a text, it will either give you subscript, click again on it, and superscript. And that takes us to the next part, which I'm really happy about. And that is that these features are now part of Global Styling. Let's hop on over to Global Styling. Before I talk about the new features in Global Styling, I want to talk about something that I'm not sure when it popped in here, but it is there. And it is an amazing feature. And that is the ability to create your own style settings now and save them and give them even a name. These are the ones that I've been working with. You can see the ones that I've loaded plus the default group. How do I create my own? I've set up a new styling here with new palette colors and topography settings. How do I do that? The first thing you need to do is duplicate the one that you are working with or that you want to start with. So I'll go and I'll select duplicate. Then you will see it says exquisite copy 12. Scroll to the bottom and it appears here at the bottom. Next, go to the three dots and select edit name. And I'll call it JP goodness no spaces so that's why i put the dash there and i just say yes then when i scroll down there is jp goodness at the bottom i can put it on the default put it back on jp goodness this will also now be saved when you export this layout and if you want to delete it as simple as going to the three dots with the one you have selected and select delete you will notice that if i go to chubby let's see if i can delete it no so those that come by default with the builder cannot be deleted. Let's put it back on the one that I was used. Exquisite. Now, while I was doing all of that, you probably saw the little sparkles, sparkles over here and you went like, wait, what? And yes, wherever you see the sparkles, we are talking about artificial intelligence, the new hip word, AI. And this will allow you in future to generate a new color scheme right here within the builder by just clicking on this button. It's not working for me at this moment. As I said, this is a staging. For the AI, it needs to go outside and it's not gonna do that. The same here for topography. So you have independent control. You can create new color schemes, play around a little bit and see which works for you. And then combined with this current style settings up here, once you find one that works for you, you can duplicate and you can change and save the name. Same here for the topography. Now we return to the global style settings. I was talking in terms of those extra features when it comes to topography and fonts. I'll head on over, what is this? Let me first check. This one is set to heading, no, let's choose this one over here. And this is heading five. Heading five, which isn't correct. It should be a heading two if it's under a heading one. But anyway, we're going to work with it as a styling feature and not as a HTML tag feature. So, okay, we're going to work with these two. Now, this is something I've run into the past quite a lot. I want this to be italic. But the problem is every time I go and I set something to heading five, 
it's not going to give me italics because we couldn't set that within Global Styling. But I have no fear, Janice. We've changed that. So I'll undo this, Control Z. There we go. Now I'll head on over to Global Stylings and this was heading five. Select it and lookity looky. Those features, let me just reduce the screen a bit. Those features are now included in Global Styling, which means with H5, you can now determine also whether H5 should be italics by default. Does it have an underline? Should it be bold? If you don't have a bold for that font and you want to use a faux bold, you can do that. What I'm going to do is just show you by setting it to italics, everything, these two that are set to heading five will turn to italics. One little feature I hope that can also come in here is the HTML tag. So when I create, for example, a new one, then I can also set that within these settings. I don't have to go and set it every time within the text element. But that to me, having these guys here, great feature. Quick word before I continue with the last little feature I want to show you is that I've seen in the comments that many people are talking about features and requests, and I need to reiterate that there is a great place. You should and go do that because the rest is unmonitored. And when we don't have a central place for it, your request can easily get lost. The first place I would recommend is you go to Brizzy.io, then select resources. And under that, you click on suggest ideas. Many of these features here, are actually features that I was looking for. And even I'm working for Brizzy. I went here and I locked them. I'm not sure if my name sometimes appear there. If you go into some of these features, you will see you lock them. But a big group of them I added there. Now, what is going to happen is that the development team will take a look at that and they will tell you, yes, okay, great feature, or they will be unclear. What do you mean? Give me some more information. Or they will tell you it can't be done or it won't be done. The two are different. One is maybe technical reason, but the other one is maybe uh, we don't think it fits Brizzy. And I encourage you that if you get a negative response and you still feel there is a practical reason, persist. You know, don't just give up. So for all of this, for example, I saw this uh, icon request for the hamburger menu, that that should also be changeable. Great idea. I think that is locked already here. So you can come here, you can lock your ideas, but before you do that, just search it through the post. So I can check on icon hamburger just in a, as an example. Add button in hamburger menu, import custom icons to element and icon box. And this is the one that I've shown you, actually. And when you click on it, aha, looky, looky, that was me. And this was October 18, 2023. I've been on this one for a long time, so you can understand why I'm very excited about the icons. But there we go. This is how it got there. And I encourage you to do the same. A final one, I just want to show you it is there. Let's go to any text element, select it, click on T for topography, and then select Add New Font. And then under Add New, you're going to see Adobe fonts are here. And I think anyone who's been with Brizzy from the beginning, I bought my Premium Pro license before it was even released on an early bird promotion. And at that time, this was one of the features that was just around the corner. Well, that corner is finally here. I cannot show you yet the integration. Like I said, I'm not able to access external requests with this staging demo, but it is there and you will be able to bring in your Adobe fonts very soon. And that is a number of features that you can be expecting, but stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube because there are still a few other sneak peeks coming out, which I will show you before the official release. From me then, on this crazy, crazy Sunday, have a great day.